these tanks are very, very capable. The armour is uh, graded secret by the, by the British government, so we don't know exactly what's in it, but uh, all analysts suggest that a Challenger 2 would be able to put up with the incoming fire from a Russian T-72. The most likely thing that Ukraine is, is facing on the battlefield today. Tanks are still vulnerable from the air. They're vulnerable from above. The, the armor on the top of a turret is only a couple of inches thick, so drones are able to get through the top armor of a tank. However, drones are generally low, slow, noisy. You can see them, and they are very uh, easily shot down with a machine gun. So drones, a lot of people say, oh, drones is gonna be the, the end of the tank. Absolutely not. I think what we're seeing in Ukraine at the moment is this argument playing out about what is the future of the tank and does it have a future? Ukraine has got the most experience of any nation in recent memory of fighting a massive armoured force such as Russia, and they are asking for more tanks. So I think we should believe them when, uh, when we sort of judge, is the day of the tank over? It definitely is not. You have to account for the drones and for the underbelly threat from buried mines and so on and so forth, but the, I think the death of the tank is a long way off. Challenger 2 fires three main rounds. Firstly, a big high explosive round called Hesh, high explosive squash head, because the top of it, when it hits an armored vehicle or a, a light-skinned vehicle or a bunker, it squashes out to ex, uh, increase the area of the blast behind it. The second type of round is uh, best known as a fin round. It's uh, technically known as an APFSDS, armored piercing, fin stabilized, discarding sabo. It's basically a long dart, uh, depleted uranium dart, really heavy dart that fires at above 1,500 meters a second. And at that speed, metal acts like liquid. So even though this dart has no explosive in it whatsoever, it's going so fast that it just bores its way through enemy tanks and other, other metal uh, vehicles. The clever thing is, the horrific thing is, that it doesn't just go into the tank. What it's designed to do is go through the other side. So it perforates the tank. And because it's going above 1,500 meters a second in what's called the hydrodynamic regime, it creates a vacuum behind it. And that vacuum sucks anything that's soft and squidgy, like us, out of the turret creates a massive mess inside the turret of metal things being chucked around almost as if you've set off a grenade inside the turret. And also because of the speed of the round, it, in it increases the pressure and therefore the temperature inside the turret. And so any exposed round, such as we know Russian uh, tanks have, they have their, their explosive and their tank rounds in a, in a rot rotating carousel that is not armored, it's not protected, the sudden increase in temperature can set all that off. And that's why we see a lot of Russian T-72 tanks and some of the older variants being hit in Ukraine and suddenly brewing up this, this sudden explosion from inside, which flips the turret off quite often. That's nothing to do with the round that's hit it. That's all to do with the overpressure and the sudden increase in temperature, which sets off the charges inside the turret.